Yosef Vissarionovich Dugashvili, also known as Joseph Stalin, was born in 1878 in Georgia, which was part of the Russian Empire. His family was very poor, and as a young boy, he was inspired by the ideals of Vladimir Lenin. Stalin then joined the Bolsheviks and quickly rose to the ranks as a highly skilled leader. He gained power after the death of Lenin and ruthlessly worked to become head of the government. By 1928, Stalin had reached absolute power. Using police terror, indoctrination, propaganda, and other aspects of totalitarianism, he maintained total control of the economy and communist state. Throughout his rule, he eliminated political enemies and threats to his power. Starting in 1937, he turned his attention towards purging the Red Army. Marshal Mikhail Tukhachevsky was perhaps the most important and influential commander purged by Stalin. He commanded the Soviet army during the Russo-Polish War, 1920-21, and from 1925 to 1928 served Stalin as chief of staff of the Red Army. In this role, he helped to modernize the army, initiating programs for aviation, tactics, and deep operations. He was then made a marshal in 1935 at the age of 42. However, his increased power caused Stalin to feel threatened, as absolute power was essential to his rule. Stalin limited everything, including freedom of thought, saying, Ideas are more powerful than guns. We would not let our enemies have guns. Why should we let them have ideas? Tukhachevsky had originally been working with fellow marshal, Clement Voroshilov, and was suddenly relieved of this duty and made deputy commander of the Volga Military District, a significant downgrade. He was then secretly arrested on May 22, 1937. Tukhachevsky was investigated by the NKVD, led by Nikolai Yezov, and was accused of being a German spy and sympathizer. Author Sebag Montefiore writes, a few days later, as Yazov buzzed in and out of Stalin's office, a broken Tukhachevsky confessed that Avil Yenukidze had recruited him in 1928 and that he was a German agent in cahoots with Nikolai Bukharin to seize power. Tukhachevsky's confession, which survives in the archives, is dappled with a brown spray that was later found to be blood spattered by a body in motion. On June 11, 1937, Tukhachevsky and eight other generals were tried for treason. Their trial was nicknamed the Case of Trotskyist Anti-Soviet Military Organization. The judges at the trial were also extremely nervous, and five were executed as well. The men were declared guilty at 11.35 p.m., and Tukhachevsky was shot that night. This could be considered ironic, because Stalin once said, the only real power comes out of a long rifle. The NKVD targeted all military personnel whom Stalin believed were a threat, including almost all of the high command. According to American historian Walter Lacker, three out of five marshals, 15 out of 16 army commanders, 60 out of 67 corps commanders, and 136 out of 199 divisional commanders were murdered. Historian Rory A. Mendvidov also writes, that the army suffered not only from the arrest, but also from the demotion and discharge of thousands of talented commanders and commissars who were expelled from the party, and the combination of arrests and executions and demotions severely crippled the army. Russia lost more officers due to the purge than any army ever did in a war. Officers were accused of being Trotskyists, conspiring with Germany and Japan, and were killed, sent to gulags, or demoted. The drastic purges of the Red Army ultimately affected Russia's success in and the outcome of World War II. In 1939, Russia invaded Finland in an attempt to gain the territory. However, the loss of capable members of the High Command affected the outcome of this winter war. By this time, many had been purged and those remaining were either terrified, untrained, or both. Since no one was brave enough to make their own decisions, this faulty leadership was extremely costly. Historian Robert C. Tucker writes that, The Winter War cost the Soviet Union 200,000 lives, according to Finnish estimates. The 30,000 captured Soviet prisoners returned by the Finns at the war's end were immediately arrested and sent to concentration camps for terms of five to eight years. 
the remaining officers were shot. Even if one survived this war, they were killed or arrested upon return. All the officers who had been eliminated caused young and inexperienced men to be placed in these vacated positions. Post-purge survivors were totally unsuited for their jobs. Soviet losses helped the Germans in World War II. Hitler himself was greatly pleased. Roy A. Medvedev writes, The destruction of the best officers of the Red Army caused great rejoicing among the Germans. On January 9, 1941, Hitler told a meeting of Nazi generals planning the attack on the USSR, they do not have good commanders. These losses also aided the Germans as they began Operation Barbarossa, Hitler's plan to invade and overtake Russia. The German army made it to the outskirts of Moscow before the Russians turned the tide, and the famous Battle of Stalingrad could have been much shorter with better command. Once Stalin realized the trouble he was in, it was too late. The Red Army suffered huge and uncalled for losses due to this lack of leadership. Despite these extreme setbacks, the crippled Red Army managed to somehow turn the tide and eventually march into Germany's capital, Berlin, four years after Germany had nearly taken Moscow. По отношению ко всему бюджету значительно меньше, чем это имеет место в большинстве государств. Stalin did achieve his goal of absolute power. He was still in power at the time of his death in 1953, but it had come at a great cost to his country and his people. He said, death is the solution to all problems. No man, no problem. <laughs>